Spears. I'm with the Colorado Springs Fire Department. I'm a fire inspector with the department and I'm here to t today to talk about kitchen safety. So the first thing that we want to take a look at is what would we do if we had a fire here in the kitchen? So if we had a fire either on the stove or on in, in this um, device here, what would we do? Typically what would happen is the heat, the gas would go up into the hood system itself, melt the fusible links and then the suppression component would dump onto the uh, onto the fire. But if that doesn't happen, what would we do next? If the system did not operate properly, uh, for whatever reason, you'd come over here to the manual pull station. From the manual pull station, what you'd do is you'd grab a hold of this, this handle here and you'd pull on it. And you want to make sure to give a nice hard pull on the, on the device here so that way it actually operates the suppression system. Because there's approximately four to six inches that you actually have to pull on this in order to get that, that line to be able to pull to operate the system. So what can we expect when the system does operate? What will happen are these uh, these caps here will blow off these nozzles. These caps are actually used to help protect the system so that way grease and other things don't build up inside. So these caps will blow off. From, from those nozzles what will happen is the wet chemical suppression agent will then coat the surface. It will help to cool the fire but it will also help to uh, suffocate the fire and remove the oxygen from the combustion process. Due to the changes in the cooking media, um, such as oils, fats, things like that, it's actually prompted a change within some of the fire suppression system requirements for commercial kitchens. Some of those include now a wet chemical suppression system instead of a dry chemical suppression system. But also too, a K-type fire extinguisher to be used in conjunction with the wet chemical suppression system. These K-class fire extinguishers are used for Class A fires, our, our trash can fires, our just ordinary combustion combustibles, but then also our cooking media fires, our fats, our oils, and things like that. So in order to use the fire extinguisher, we want to remember that PASS acronym. We want to remember to pull, pull the pin here. We want to remember to aim. We want to take this, this hose and nozzle here and we want to aim at the base of the fire. And then we also want to squeeze. We want to squeeze the handle here and then we want to sweep it back and forth. So what we'll do is we'll demonstrate just a little bit here. So we would take our fire extinguisher and remember these fire extinguishers are very heavy. So we want to grab a hold of the handle here and then we want to pull, pull the pin here. We're going to step back. We're going to aim. We're going to aim our nozzle at the base of the fire. Remember, always at the base of the fire. We don't want to aim at the flames because if we aim at the flames, we're not necessarily going to be as, as productive if we aim at the base. And then we're going to squeeze. And then remember, we can't forget to sweep back and forth. What would we do if we had a grease fire on the, on the stove? The first thing to remember is not to panic. And also, too, not to put water on the fire. Uh, typically, what a lot of people want to do is they'll want to grab the pot, the, the handle to the pot, and then they'll want to walk it over to the sink. So it's important that we leave it in place. But also, too, we don't want to use baking soda. We don't want to use flour on the fire. On the fire. What we want to do is we want to try to smother the fire as, as best that we can. So what we're going to do is we're going to grab a hold of the lid, and then what we're going to do is step off to the side and we're just going to place the lid on top of the pot. What that does is it helps to hopefully break up that chemical chain reaction of the fire. It ho hopefully helps to take the oxygen away from the fire. So it's always important that if we don't have a lid, let's say we did not have a lid for this pot, for whatever reason, I know that at home I don't necessarily have lids for all my pots. What we want, would want to remember is grab something that's non-combustible, such as this nice cookie sheet. It's nice and metal, it's not going to burn. Being non-combustible, it's not going to burn. So what we would do is then we would do the same thing that we did with the, pot, with the lid to the pot. We would just slide this over the top and rest it right there. Now the important thing to remember is we, don't, we want to try to make sure that we set it up on top of the pot so that way it, does do, it has the same principle as that lid. It hopefully helps take the oxygen away from the fire. And then two, after we do that, we want to remove it from the heat. We want to take it and we want to remove it from the heat. We can also look at trying to turn off the, the fuel to the stovetop so that way it also helps kind of um, remove the heat from the fire itself. Another important thing to remember is obviously we want to 
to keep our workspace free of any clutter, free of any combustible material. All too frequently during inspections, we see things stored on top of the stove. It's always important that we maintain that clearance. We always, we always want to make sure that we have combustible materials such as these paper bags, oven mitts, or even plastic containers off of the stove or even around the stove. A good, uh, good method is making sure that we maintain a three, three feet of clearance around the stove so that way if we have anything that would splash on top of those combustibles or if we'd have a flame that would get carried away that it would not catch, catch those adjacent combustibles on fire. In addition to making sure that we maintain our, our workspace free of any combustible material, we also want to ensure that we maintain our flue spaces on our appliances free of any grease buildup. Frequently we have a lot of, we, have, we do have fires that involve commercial kitchen appliances where the, the flue space on the appliance has grease buildup so that provides a good fuel source for any fire or any ignition source. So as we pull the appliance out, we want to ensure that we, we check these flue spaces. So for example here on the stove we want to ensure and we take a look at the flue space that's located back behind the shelf and we want to ensure that it's kept free of any grease or any any other type of buildup and as we go to put this appliance back we want to make sure that we put it back right underneath those nozzles so that way when the system does operate or has to operate that it will operate properly and it will suppress the fire earlier we talked about the fusible links the fusible links are found up inside the hood system itself those fusible links are vitally important to be kept clear of any grease buildup. Uh, and then also too, those lines that those fusible links that are attached to are also important that we keep those areas free of any grease buildup. The, what happens if we do have a fire underneath the hood itself, we have our hot smoke and gas and things like that that will go up into the hood. It'll melt away those fusible links and then it'll, that's our automatic component to our fire suppression system in the kitchen. Every month, your wet chemical suppression system, in addition to your fire extinguishers, needs to have what they call a monthly owner's inspection or a quick check done on the system. So as what we would do, similar to what we would do on a fire extinguisher, we would want to make sure that there's no damage to it. So we would take the fire extinguisher itself, you know, first, we look at the fire extinguisher, there's no damage to it, it hasn't fallen off the bracket. We also too want to make sure our tamper devices are in place. These pins here, and the gauges in the green, and there's no damage here. And then what we would do is we'd date an initial on the back of the tank. So we would do that for a fire extinguisher. We also do that for the wet chemical suppression system in the kitchen. So from there, what we would do is we would do a quick check on the system. Once a month, we would take a look at the piping itself. We want to ensure that there's no damage to the system. We want to make sure that these caps are in place. These caps are very are vitally important because what happens is through high levels of cooking, we can get a lot of grease buildup and things like that within the nozzle. So we want to ensure that those caps are in place. We also too want to make ensure that there's no damage to the piping. A lot of times what can happen is somebody can hit a pot or something like that against those nozzles and, and change the orientation of them. Another thing to remember is we want to ensure that there's been no change to any of the appliances underneath the hood. What can happen several times or many times is that the appliance can get shifted, can get moved out of position, then it changes the, the coverage of those nozzles. So we want to ensure that we, we maintain the coverage, we, make, we check, make sure there's no damage here, and then also too we want to ensure that those caps are in place. We see these type of devices in schools, in many different commercial kitchens in schools, um, but not every kitchen has one of these type of uh, devices. It's always important to remember as you lift the lid on these devices that we avoid hitting these nozzles here because we want to make sure that we don't do any damage to any of the piping for our suppression system. In addition to the inspection that we complete over underneath the hood, we also want to take a look at our manual pull station here. It's also called a manual actuator. What we want to do is we want to ensure that there's no damage here to the system. What happens many times is this plastic rod that, that helps kind of, it's a tamper device that helps keep that pull station in place. So we want to make sure that that's not broken, this little glass or plastic rod here. We also make, want to make sure and ensure that there's no damage to the piping and that there's nothing 
piled up in front of it. Many times we'll have trash cans, we'll have boxes, things like that. And this is no different than a pull station that you would find on your automatic fire alarm system. So we want to ensure that we maintain this area clear and unobstructed. So each month we want to take our inspection tag, we want to flip it over, and then there's a section where we can actually record our monthly inspection record. So we want to date, and then we want whoever's completing that monthly inspection or that quick check, we want to make sure that they initial by that date. And then from there, we'll just always make sure that we have that. These tags are put on the system when they're inspected every six months. So if we notice that we're past our six month inspection, it's probably a time that we need to call our inspection company and have them come out and complete the inspection. So as we conclude the video, one important thing is we want, first want to remember is we want to maintain our fire suppression system and any other fire protection system that we have in the kitchen. It's vitally important that we maintain those systems so that way it does suppress the fire and allows people to be able to exit the building and be able to get out safely. Also too, we want to be, remember to always be searching for that education piece. We want to always be familiar with what we have and, and if we don't know what it is, to ask questions. And if you should have any questions about anything that we covered today, please don't hesitate to contact the fire department. You can reach me or any of the other inspectors within the office. But always, always remember, if the fire is too big and gets out of hand, please exit the building, pull the pole station before you leave, and call 911. If you should have any further questions in regards to anything that was shown in the video or anything that wasn't shown in the video, please don't hesitate to contact the Colorado Springs Fire Department, Division of the Fire Marshal.